In this video, I'm going to run through how you can integrate x times sine squared of x. So, we've got our integral there. And the first thing that you've got to realize is that sine squared x is a little bit of a nuisance. So, we can do some substitution using a trig identity to make it a bit easier. So, we're going to use the fact that sine squared x is 1 minus cos 2x over 2. And what we can do is we can replace the sine squared x with this expression. And we can, of course, take the 2 out to get a factor of a half. So I've just replaced the sine squared x with this expression here. And I've got a factor of a half coming out there. This is obviously a constant term, so this doesn't actually matter in the integration. That can be taken out of the integral. So I'm just going to remove that from the integral there and put it outside. So what we're actually doing is we're finding the integral of sine squared x. And to do that, you just do each term at a time. So the integral of 1 is x, and then the integral of cos 2x is simply going to be sine 2x over 2. If you're not sure where that came from, I'll link to a video where I explain how to do this integral step by step. And I've put plus c1 because we've done the integration, so there is a constant, but this constant will be included in a later constant. So we can just sort of neglect it, but I'm including it there for completeness. So now we need to think about this integral. We're going to use this integral of sine squared x to help us do this integration. And we need to think about using integration by parts. So we've got this times this. So two functions multiplied together, that is an integration by parts problem. And our integration by parts formula tells us that the integral of some function u multiplied by dv, where one of these functions is u, one of these functions is going to be dv, is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And when we're deciding which of these functions is going to be u and which of these functions is going to be dv, we need to think about how to make this integral as simple as possible. And obviously, when you've got an x there, the derivative of x is simply 1 or dx. So we've got u here and du here. So if this was simply dx, that would be a lot easier. So we're going to choose u to be x, and then that will mean that dv is going to be this. So we're taking u equals x and dv is sine squared of x. So we need to get the remaining things in this expression here. So we need du and we need v. We can get du by finding the derivative of this and we can find v by integrating both sides. So we simply do that there and we've got du equals dx, nice and simple. And then we've got to find the integral of sine squared x. And well, we actually already done that here. So we're just taking this expression and putting it here because we've already proved that. So we've now got everything that we need to replace this expression. So we're just going to do a step-by-step -step substitution, replacing u with x, replacing dv with sine squared x, and just replacing everything with everything here. And when we do that, we end up with this expression. It looks like a lot, but if you follow it step-by-step, -step, all I've actually done is do the simple substitution one thing at a time. For example, u is coming out as x, v is coming out as this massive expression here. So that's why I get x over 2, and then all of this comes into the brackets, for example. And so we've got this huge expression, and it's not really as shocking and complicated as you might think by looking at it, because the only thing you actually have to worry about is this integration here. And you're going to do this step by step. So when we do this integration, we find the integral of x, and that's simply x squared times a half. So that's what I've done there. And then here, the sine is turning into a cosine. You've got a 2 there, so you're going to divide by that. And that's why you end up with a 4 here. So we've now got this expression. The next step, obviously, is to multiply things out. So the half times a half. And then we've got a half times a quarter there. And then we've got this bracket to multiply out. So we just multiply out all of the brackets, and we end up with this. That's simply just multiplying out the brackets there. And we should notice that you've got this term here and this term here. So these can be combined, and then that will give you your final answer. So all I've done in that line is just simply combine those two to get x squared over 4. And there we have our final answer. So we've now integrated x times sine squared x. I hope this video was helpful to you and thank you very much for watching.